Oh, we got Disney trying to block the stream. They're not liking the the Pearl Mutter Nelson Pelt. Hey, I'm talking about X Men '97. We're telling them about your show. I'm not hating on your show. What's up, everybody? Well, I'm not sure if everybody went to bed, but uh, I guess Disney interrupted the stream. They're upset. Me telling the uh, Ike Perlmutter uh, history of Marvel and the purchase of saving of Marvel. Um, anybody that uh, shows back up, appreciate it, man. I know it's late. I'm going to go ahead and finish this uh, review of X-Men 97 Season 3. I don't know why Disney would want to disconnect the stream in the middle of me reviewing their own stuff. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, let's see. Attempting to reconnect. Oh, that's the old news. Okay, cool. Yep, yep. So it looks like we are back up. I'm going to go ahead and finish recording so I can get some videos out to my uh, non-live stream uh, part of the community. And we'll talk some more uh, X-Men 97. Um, but yeah, Disney, um, you can't hold me down. You know what it is? It is the fact that I am the George Lucas representing Stan Lee Marvel protecting Star Wars EU lore providing Marvel comic deep diving woo source material adhering live streaming while I'm drinking a beer in traditional OG fan I'll pop up George and Stan whenever I can reversing all the bullshit that began woo now we are back to our regular scheduled program. We are going to go ahead and finish this X-Men 97 breakdown. Disney, I don't know what you think you're doing, Disney. You think you got it coming, but you don't. I'm going to keep talking about the lore and the source material. You guys seem to be firing people that are sticking to the source material. Uh, you know, hopefully that's for an actual reason. Uh, but if not, we're going to get back into into this review here. All right. So <clears throat> where were we at here? We were looking at X-Men 97. Okay. Yeah. So she's uh, taking that baby monitor. She throws it against the fucking wall. She gets imbued with all this uh, this green spiritual power. And then we cut to the uh, danger room. And that's when they have, like, the um, training schedules or whatever. Like, so that's a new thing on the Danger Room. That's, like, modernizing it again. Now, that's a modern change that we can uh, we can accept, you know. That's a, that's an okay type uh, modern change to, uh, to have. Um, but anyways, so then uh, basically all this crazy shit starts going on. Uh, Madeline's, like... Um, <clears throat> Changing into her old, uh, or into her old, into her comic uh, accurate costume, uh, except it's like the black. It's the so it's the newer version. It's the it's the newer comic version of it, the black one, and uh, and then all this crazy shit starts happening. I think it starts like they're watching the the TV, and uh, yeah, my internet's still kind of fucked up. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to watch the replays. So I can get it a picture in my mind again. So they're like watching the TV. It's like Jubilee and Richter. And then all of a sudden the eyes on the TV kind of start lighting up green, right? And then you've got uh, Gambit. Gambit goes into the danger room to check on Rogue and Magneto. And they're like holding each other because remember the ending of the last show. And uh, and then they start like melt, like their faces kind of start melting together. And their fucking bodies start to merge and shit like that. And she's like, why don't you get out of here? Remy, da 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 da, fucking like basically clowning on him and shit like that, um, and then um, <clears throat> and then Morph talks about headed to the showers or some shit like that, and Wolverine's like, I gotta go check on Jean or something, and Morph's like, and then there was Morph, and that's so that's that's the um, subtle, sub, somewhat overt whatever, but it's not like totally, you know. Again, if a ten year old's watching, they may they're they're not maybe getting what the fuck he's getting at. Um, and then from there, you know, he goes in there and then he like, hears the shit and the, the shower's already running or whatever. And uh, I'm thinking, oh, God, here we go. Uh, but uh, and then he goes in and then there's this like fucking voice and all that. And it says, uh, I'm going to use you um, like you were meant to be when I created you or this, this and that. And then it, you see 
sinister like transform kind of like into the shower like comes out and then it's sinister and then it turns into some other shit and then morph turns back into like the old school looking morph uh from the original show in the 90s um i need to refresh this chat here and um and yeah and then that shit happens and then it phases back over to jubilee and uh and richter watching tv on the couch and then this fucking creature like comes out through the couch um and it's like i don't know if it's supposed to be i think it's supposed to be like richter's mom or something like that and she like walks up but she's walking like all weird like spider walk type shit or whatever and then jubilee and him like jubilee kind of like runs off and then richter like freaking cowers like down up against the wall and then it like walks up in front of him and then like it open the she opens her mouth and then out of that comes another head and then like this other shit happens real like horror-esque type shit you know for a cartoon um, and then after that, um, it flashes back to Gambit and he's like leaving the danger room or whatever. And then, um, and then Wolverine, fuck, I can't remember what happens to Wolverine. Um, and then I should have taken, I didn't have time to take notes cause I started writing off the clone wars and all this other shit. Um, and then basically, um, I can't remember. Oh, beast comes up from the elevator or from like the lab elevator or whatever. And when the door opens, it's got this big, like demonic face type thing or whatever and opens its mouth and then all this like purple vomit shit fucking falls all over the place so they're doing like disparate different they're doing different type of like fear scenario type stuff um that's going on and um yeah and then it um it says uh um and then um she takes the baby or something like that and um and freaking Cyclops. Oh, Cyclops notices something. And then meanwhile, the other Jean Grey is like passed out still on the couch where she's like all fucked up in the lab couch, wherever she's at. And then Cyclops notices some shit. And then all of a sudden somebody's like, yeah, we're, they're like, we're, what are we, what are we doing? Like, what's going on? And they're like, we're in hell and shit. And then the floor of the, um, of the X mansion kind of starts lowering down and shit. And you see all these different beasts and creatures and demons and shit and they're basically again they look very um comic accurate to what i remember from the inferno saga um and uh basically at this point bishop is bishops with them too or whatever now this is where there's another um lore inconsistency too so they got it right on Cyclops using his uh, visor and the concussive blast and stuff like that. Um, but at this part, um, they're like all these demons and shit flying around. They're like ducking and dodging. And then he goes, charge me up. So it's almost like Thor and Iron Man, like in the, um, in the Avengers movie or the end game or any of that. Uh, but basically he Cyclops shoots him with his optic beams and then Bishop turn channels that and starts blasting and shooting all the fucking like demons and shit out of the sky. Well, again, Cyclops is, you know, they're concussive blasts. They're not lasers. And uh, Bishop's mutant ability is to absorb and then redirect um, energy and shit in, in, in the way of like fucking uh, blast and whatnot, like uh, plasma blast or whatever. Um, so that's inaccurate also to the comics. They kind of fuck that one up. And uh, anyway, so all this crazy shit's happening. Shit's falling down. Then the big a uh, big sentinel comes out of the fucking lava. Oh, and then Beast references like Dante's Inferno, which is like their um that's their homage to the Inferno. Oh, and I think when Madeline also when she first tra- um, transforms herself, she says something about I'll show them the Inferno inside of me. So they're again, it's, it's this is written and show run by a fan who's paying homage to the comic books that this shit's coming out of, dude. It's not just like, a, oh, jangling key, here's this... Com-. It's like they're constantly referring to the Inferno comic run, which, which again, I can respect that a lot. Oh, drinking a beer, so I forgot to mute it. Um, anyways, and then so Beast's like jumping around, and, sh- and then the Sentinel comes out of the fucking like lava and shit, and this hellscape that... Almost kind of also reminds me of... Um, if anyone's ever been to Disneyland, you go to the Haunted Mansion and the floor fucking goes down slowly and they have like the walls that stretches up and shit and you keep going down and down and down when you're on that fucking ride. Uh, what's up, Melissa? Yeah, we are back. Um, but yeah, so it's almost like that, like at the Haunted Mansion or whatever, right? But instead they're like lowering into fucking hell, dude. And you see like the fucking, you know, 
you know, the lava embers of hell and shit. And you see like the fucking rock formations and you got the demons flying around and all that stuff. Um, and then at this point, um, the Bishop clears house. So you think, Oh, cool. But then there's more demons. And again, like I said, there's this sentinel that comes out of the lava and he, he's got like horns and shit. So it's almost like a demonic sentinel or whatever. And again, and then it has like glowing green eyes too. So it's it's letting you know, hey, this is all Madeline Pryor's work. She's the one that's that's the cause for all this, and um, and yeah. And then after that, I fucking can't exactly remember. That's why I'm waiting. Uh, unfortunately, not all my internet's fired back up yet. I'm probably gonna have to reset this PlayStation, see if it'll turn back on. Uh, but I'll just go by memory. Um, and. Um, and basically at that point, like they're all kind of fucked. And then all of a sudden, uh, Gene wakes up. So you got Wolverine fighting. Everybody's fighting down in this hellscape or whatever. And I think, is it Beast with Gene or no? It's Wolverine, Beast. Fuck, I can't remember who it is. Gene wakes up. And then she's like, I've got to stop her. Da, 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 da. She like has a memory of Madeline Pryor. And they're like, oh, you can't. You're too weak. Da, 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 da. And then she's like, I'm not going to fight her with my body. I'm going to fight her with my mind or whatever. And then Jean, like, floats down through, like, the astral plane through uh, with, like, a blue. So you got Madeline Pryor. All her energy is green energy. And then you got um, you got Jean. All her energy is blue. I'm going to reset this PlayStation see if that will help me. Um, and then uh, what an, another unprofessional part of the stream um, and then anyway, so she starts fighting back against Madeline Pryor. And then she's like, yeah, these are not your memories. These are mine. And da 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 And they're, and they're fucking battling each other. So they're basically, it's like a battle on the astral plane. So back in the day when I was telling you guys about um, the different Claremont comic runs, I was talking about the Mirror Island saga. How it was the Shadow King versus Professor X. And they have this battle on the astral plane and shit in their minds and all that. Um, and then they also did the same thing on that Legion show that was on FX, where it's like Legion versus the Shadow King. Um, and they do that in a different way. Um, but so this is that version, and it's Madeline Pryor versus Jean Grey um, on the astral plane, uh, which was fucking really cool, dude. Like, that's proper use of the character and how you would use the character, you know? If it was like a, a MCU classic, you know, MCU version of, uh, you know, x-men it would probably be gene gray punching the shit out of you know colossus or something right but no this person actually knows the character of gene gray and that she's um and, and her powers and whatnot and they're highlighting and using that as her and madeline uh, battle each other um, and it's got all this different cool shit that happens well while all this is also going on she says these are my memories and then so gene's trying to show her she goes i was the phoenix and da 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 and then it, and then they go and Jean like transforms into the Phoenix, and she and then she goes and picks Madeline up, you know, with a psychic thing of herself like in her hand and shit. And then Madeline's like fighting back and doing this other shit. Um, and then as all that's going on, um, all of a sudden they're teleported. It's the scene of um, Jean Grey when she's a kid. And they said something about, oh, she, uh, I can't remember. She says something about her parents or something like that. And then it goes to the door and it shows Professor X, like first meeting Jean Grey, like, oh, how are you? And da 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 da. And then she's talking to the, uh, he's talking to the parents or whatever. And then it flashes back to a different part of when Jean Grey is a kid. Um, and again, it's this whose memories are whose type thing, you know, as, the, as this is all going on and they're battling each other. Um, and yeah, okay, so, all right, well, I got all my shit back up, so this is going to be interesting to edit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it is Richter and Jubilee watching the TV, uh, and then Madeline transforms into Gambit when Morph's about to go and jump in the shower. Then Morph goes over there, trying to figure out who it is. Oh, and it is Wolverine in the shower, it shows. Then he says something about nothing about no redheads here, and then boom, it just steam goes up. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And then, boom, it freaking, he turns into uh, Mr. Sinister. And as that's going on, it shows Rogue and Magneto. And it's funny because Rogue is wearing almost like a Savage Land outfit. And that's when she says, oh, she says, I found myself a real man, Remy. Uh, and then it shows her and Magneto. They start melting into each other. Yeah, see, I got to have the visual on this shit, dude. And then all of a sudden, yeah, this thing pops through the TV like, um, 
like the ring, you know what I'm saying? But she's got like claws and she's got like purple toned skin. And then her fucking face is like falling apart with half her brains on the ground. Like they did some pretty cool shit for it being a cartoon. I mean, obviously it's still cartoony. And then it turns in. She, yeah, she it says speaking Brazilian and Portuguese. So it's, it's definitely like Richter's mom or whatever. And, but she's like walking on, on all fours. Like I said, like a spider. And then it's got like the mom's head. And then, yeah, morph like cowers in the corner. Sinister comes up behind him. His eyes turn green again indicating madeline Pryor. uh bishop and cyclops uh walk into the baby's room and the fucking um baby stuffed animal turns into fucking like a, a being the bass the, the crib and bassinet fucking wrap up cyclops and um a fucking bishop like in tentacle like type shit and then a fucking face Oh, Bishop's sister from the future that he can't get back to, that he belongs in, her face pops up through one of the tentacles and shit. Like, they got some, like, Lovecraftian, like, type horror shit going on here. Um, And then, yeah, like I said, the creature that looks like Richter's mom pops up in front of him, and then the mouth, the head comes out of the mouth into another head, and then it fucking, like, explodes. Jubilee, like, blasts it with her her fucking powers. (laughs) And then that shit happens with Beast, like I was saying, where this, this creature, green creature with a face has this purple throw up that comes out its mouth again like all this is all like mad then down at the then and they're all meeting up in the mansion so you got gambit ran in he's like oh my god gambit can never unsee that <laughs> rogan rogan magneto and then wolverine and then they're all kind of together dude and it's got all these like vine type shit going on and then the whole house like turns like with the green fucking mystical shit and that's when they all fall down dude like i said and it's like dante's inferno he says well i share sinister's apparent affection for dante's inferno and again a lot of these creatures they look very similar to a lot of the demonic shit that's in the inferno comic dude so again very comic accurate um when it comes to that um, yeah, and then they're firing, and again, comic inaccuracy, they have, um, a oh, Beast starts flying up on this Beast, fucking it up, not a Lewis Carroll fan, so Beast, like, mentioning all these different, like, <laughs> fucking authors and stories, uh, Bishop throws Wolverine at Beast, like, a uh, fastball special, like Colossus would do, and then that's when, uh, Bishop jumps down and says, yo, Cyclops, hit me, and again, that's, so this is the inaccuracy, you know, optic blasts are not laser beams, so Bishop can't absorb their power, uh, but he does, so that's where inaccuracy occurs here, but whatever, um, and then he unloads and starts blasting all these fools, um, and he says, time for an exorcism, punks, and I think um, that's on that, like, original trailer when he's blasting with both hands, fucking all this purple energy and shit, I think that's kind of where they use that scene from, and then he's blasting them all. Boom. You think he wiped them all out? Ha ha ha. Yay. They're all happy. Yeah. at and I don't know, Chris, if it was AT&T or Disney, you know, they didn't like the, all the pearl mutter and pelts talk, you know, so they tried to take me down. My channel's under attack. Anyways. Um, <laughs> so then you have the Sentinel, dude. And he almost looks like fucking a Skeletor type Sentinel with horns and shit. And that's when Gene comes down. So Gene comes down like messianic and shit. Like again, like a parallel to Dante's Inferno. She's in her like ro- like her like ward like robe fucking attire like that she came in like all fucked up and then she starts lifting them up from the bottom like out of hell type shit and she has this blue shit going on she lands on the ground and then that yeah so this is much better and then she's like all weak and shit her eyes are all lit up blue and then she falls over clone jean and then it calls her clone jean so they never name her madeline Pryor yet but you know comic fans know it's madeline Pryor. And again, she looks like Sydney Sweeney could play the role. Um, obviously, she's animated um, and then has red hair. And so she's standing there. She's talking shit. Um, and then Cyclops is like, Sinister's doing this. Da, 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 da. And she goes, who am I, Scott? Say my name. Do you know who I am? Like fucking with him. And then meanwhile, she's holding baby Cable, uh, Nathan, and behind her. Uh, they got cool visuals, man, though. They got the fucking blue, green fucking stuff. And then she says, I'm forged in righteous brimstone. I am the Goblin Queen. You know? And, you know, again, she's not desexualized like Rogue. Um, and then she talks shit. Don't follow me. da 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 She blasts fucking Scott up against the wall. Um, and then there's like a, a, bl- a blast of like bright light. 
And, um, yeah, so you know what? I think the astral plane shit happens later. Well, whatever. So I could be wrong on that. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, this is going to be a hell of a video to edit. <laughs> and then it shows them all fucked up, like in the danger room or the lab or whatever the hell they're at, dude. And they're all fucking licking their wounds, you know. They're all fucked up. Man, 90 you back, dude. Dedication. Man, I got the best fucking chat in the world and shit. You guys are awesome. Internet disconnects. And fucking 10 minutes at 12, 20 minutes after the stream's back. You guys are all back here, dude. Jesse, my boy. Woo! I started off with some Ric Flair talking shit, doing a promo versus Disney. They heard me talking about uh, Pearl Mutter and Pelts. And uh, apparently they called AT&T and told them to shut my shit down for a minute. Uh, King Chris back. Ghostface. Fuck Norris, Melissa Lord, you guys are fucking awesome, dude. We're gonna do some special shit when we do when I do get monetized, and I I will get monetized, Disney. That's one thing you can say for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, no, when I do, which I'm I think I'm gonna be doing this shit within a year. That's my goal. I right now I'm projected to be able to do it just about a year. So to do get monetized in a year would be fucking awesome, dude. That shows how many awesome people that I got. Um, and again, I mean, I, the way I look at it, man, I've always been a hard worker my whole life. Uh, I'm going to work hard at this shit and I can outwork anybody. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's how I'm going to get to the top. So, and then I got great people like you here fucking supporting me. So, uh, the chances are, uh, more than likely, uh, that that's going to happen. So anyways, um, yeah. So thank you guys all for being back here. I know it's getting late, so I won't, I won't bullshit too much. Fuck. I got to start remembering to hit that mute button. So they're all fucked up, and then Rogue and Magneto come back because they actually were in the danger room, I guess. But you know, they didn't see what was going on, or maybe they were out on—I don't know what the fuck was going on. They were training, now they're back. Everybody else is all fucked up. Gene's knocked out cold again. Uh, Morph's talking about he's a scientist from the 1800s, stealing our DNA to enhance himself. This, this, that, and the other. That's another miss. Oh, now he turns into regular Morph self. Uh, Gene screaming. There's too many. Da 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 da. So when 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 Gene's origin story, she can't remember. Like she's uh, she's Omega level mutinous fuck. So she doesn't know how to control her powers. A lot of that's accurate, even in Last Stand. That's why I said we're gonna dissect these X Men movies. We'll get into a lot of the comic lore that's actually accurate, and a lot of them even Wolverine origins. Although some of those are modified origins. Um, but anyways, but yeah, so. Uh, Professor X put mind blocks on Jean and stuff like that to cage in her fucking um, overpowering abilities and all that. So now that she's coming back and coming to, she's fucking having issues with that or whatever. It's cool. And then it, so then it cut scenes from where the X Men are at, and it has bats flying across the screen, screen as it turns black and shit. Like they're really trying to go with a horror vibe on this shit. Again, I find this shit very creating. Uh, creating very creative and interesting like fucking again a bad batch i don't give a shit how many jangling keys they could have fucking darth revan and bane show up next episode it don't compare like the writing on this is fucking pretty good shit so it flashes the bats go across the screen now we're back at sinister's castle which also looks 1800s victorian castle type fucking location even though i think it's a house but it's all bricked on the inside and now you see these cloning tubes there's like, fuck, I don't even know, they're like vats of this green shit, and you got one, two, three, four, five of them, you got all these little vials and chemistry set on the right, electric shit, it's like real Frankenstein shit going on, right? Um, so, and I, at this point, I'm like, holy, holy shit, man, I'm sure a lot, and then, oh, so then in Sinister comes out, he's in the shadow still, he walks up to this cauldron, <laughs> and it's all dark, and you see his chest piece lit up red, his eyes, his fucking um, diamond in his skull. Like, this shit's fucking, I mean, it's cool, bro. I, I mean, I guess I'm a fucking shill. I don't know, bro. This shit's pretty good. And he walks up, and he's got Nathan Summers, has his little sinister grin. He says, you're my prize, a random writhing thing of choice. The combination of your parents' unique genetics makes you your potential unlimited and that's all very comic accurate dude you'll you know when you get to executioner song which is is the beginning because like you find out about this stuff in inferno when he went with baby nathan and all that and then they send him to the future and all that for reasons we'll talk about in a minute when it shows up on this show um but then when you find out in the in the you know the backstory when executioner song happens in the 90s that yeah that was sinister's plan the whole time was to find the perfect um mutant 
and the offspring of Cyclops and Jean Grey, or quote-unquote a clone of Jean Grey, would make that perfect offspring. Uh, and, and this is all to get back at Apocalypse over the long arching thing of what Sinister's trying to do. Uh, I, we don't know if that'll be that way in this show. Anyway, so he puts fucking baby Nathan Cable in this fucking vat, and he's just floating around in this green goo, um, and he's talking about my will and genius will make you the perfect being, da 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 laughs man- maniacally, it says. Uh, and then they go up to this house, and again, it, it, there's fucking fog and shit. We're doing, doing the whole fucking horror vibe, so... And they walk in, uh, and it's just, so they say, I think they have Wolverine. It's weird. They have Wolverine and Rogue stay behind uh, with Gene and Beast, and it's just Cyclops, Bishop, Magneto, and Morph. I mean, Morph would probably be the last motherfucker I'd bring, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I probably would have brought Wolverine, Rogue, Cyclops, and Bishop, but anyways. And, um... And then, um, yeah, so then they go in, and then the Goblin Queen's sitting right at the top of the thing. She's got her little pose, legs fucking laid out. She's like, I knew they'd follow you, Scott. Uh, all It's all you can do. Ask the professor. Using powers of your mind. You're no match for me. Da, 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 da. And then Morph turns into Ileana. Magic, dude. So, again, we're not going to do the whole magic opens a portal to limbo, and we're not doing the whole Inferno run, although... That's my biggest criticism of this episode. Um, this shouldn't have been an episode. This should have been like a six, eight, fucking ten. I mean, they could have made this a long story arc, dude, and it would have been badass. They could have had Madeline just fucking them up over and over and over again. Demons kidnapping babies, all kinds of crazy shit like that. Um, they didn't do that. That's my biggest criticize, criticism of this. But anyways, Morph turns into fucking Ileana Rasputin with her fucking soul sword. And then Madeline's just like teleporting all over the fucking place, whooping Morph's ass. <laughs> and then she basically mind controls Morph and turns him evil. And, um, you know, he's like, yes, my queen. He freaking runs, turns it. And then he turns into dark child magic, which is her in limbo, the fucking evil version of her. And she starts fucking attacking Bishop. Um, and then Magneto's fucking fighting Madeline. And then Madeline, he's like doing elect, um, electromagnetic bursts and fucking trying to throw metal parts of the fucking wall and shit at her. She's blocking everything, doing all this crazy shit. And she goes, you can control metal, but I can turn, control anything telepathically. Um, and then she's teleporting and just fucks Magneto up too. <laughs> so, uh, is there a screen share on the comic? Just see, yeah, all I got, I'm not even reading the comic, Jesse. This is the fucking, uh, <laughs> woo. This is the X-Men 90 show. Fuck, uh, 97 cartoon, bro. This is like the third episode. Like I know fucking hold the presses, bro. I, I can't fucking believe it. Like I watched the first episode. I was like, eh, whatever. Like it was cool. They did some cool shit with Cyclops and stuff like that. But, man, and then I got into the second episode, and it was good, bro. And I've heard people nitpick things about it, but I, most people aren't big X-Men fans that I've heard criticize it. But for the most part, I've noticed the internet's kind of gone silent on this show. Like, people aren't really shitting on it um, or just choose to avoid it. And, they're, uh, you know, everybody's doing shit on the Acolyte, which is <laughs> well warranted because the Acolyte fucking sucks. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, like, pleasantly surprised, bro. Like, after this one, I'm like – and, again, it's kind of like I was saying uh, in the beginning of the stream – it's kind of like when I first watched House of the Dragon. I'm like, all right, well, the next episode's going to suck. All right, the next episode's probably going to suck. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. So she fucks Magneto up. She drops, like, uh, she basically takes stained glass and shit because they're like, it's almost like church stained glass type shit in this house. Like, the, it's again, it's like Victoria looking, like Mr. Sinister, uh, old school, you know, England and shit, even though it's obviously in New York. And she fucking, like, piles and drops all this shit, and Magneto's got cuts and shit, glass fucking flying through him, hitting him, and he's just fucked up, laying on the ground like a, like a pile of fucked up shit. <laughs> uh, and then she's just laughing, and then boom, Cyclops blasts her in the fucking mouth. Big old pile of blood spits out her mouth. She fucking wipes her lip, whatever. And then she goes over to fuck Scott up. Um, and again, they can do all this mystical shit with her walking down the steps, floating to him. And then she just seduces him, dude, and starts fucking uh, hugging him. Oh, don't worry. Da, 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 da. Kisses him and shit. And then she plans on fucking, um, I don't know if she's trying to mind control him. Oh, she says, you'll bleed too, darling. And her eyes light up green. She gets ready to kill him. And then, boom, the fucking bats fly across. And now we go back to Gene and Wolverine at the fucking mansion. 
Um, you know, and then so she's like having all these issues again with her psychic powers, and then Wolverine's like concentrate on my mind, da 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 da, and then you know he's doing his Wolverine thing, you know, you know I love you, Gene, da 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 da. Um, been wondering about X Men ninety seven is where, yeah, Jesse, I mean, sail the seven seas, brother. I mean, I, I could be a shill, or I could not. Like I said, I, I, the way I started out on this, I, you know, I, I, I obviously I criticized the. Uh, the showrunner and some of the stuff that he said before the show. Obviously, it brought up the whole non-binary crap they're doing with Morph. Uh, you know, I brought up the andro- androgenized. That's why I did the whole mass, uh, toxic masculinity misogyny stream last week because of the whole androgyny of all the shit that I saw on the show. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, now it's like I'm having trouble. Like, again, there's subtle, there's gonna, there's subtle shit, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm not fucking, again, I'm not wearing rose-colored glasses here. Uh, but again, it's it's pretty like man, the the fuck, it's comic accurate. It just it feels like I'm watching the X Men show, bro. Like I was like I was 13 again, bro. That that's the feeling I'm getting out of it. So you know, again, say what you will. I'm not gonna be intellectually dishonest. I'm not gonna fucking talk shit about something just to talk shit about it. Uh, you know, I'm getting enjoyment out. Does that mean the next episode isn't gonna go fully off rail? Hell no. I don't I don't fucking know. Um, but from what I'm seeing, dude, I got a lot of, again, a lot of inver- Inferno vibes. My big criticism, um, they wrap up this whole arc in one episode, and they probably should have taken their time with it like they did with uh, back in the day with Dark Phoenix or even shit, even Night of the Sentinel with Jubilee on the very first you know um, pilot episode in the 90s. That was a two-parter. Uh, fuck, the, the first two episodes of this uh, series was a two-parter, so they, they should have done and drawn this out like a lot longer, in my opinion. That would be my... One of my only criticizes, uh, criticisms of it. Anyways, uh, back to the review. Let me get a sip of water. Okay, so she's like, I'm going to go. Jean wakes up. She goes, I'm going to take her on. And, and, and Beast's like, you can't do that. And she goes, I'm not going to fight her with my body. I'm going to fight her with my mind. And then Jean just fucking puts her hand on her temple, dude. Boom. And then you see astral plane Jean come up. She's just blue. And then she, there's a psionic blast of, like, her face that flies through Madeline. And now, yeah, see, this is why I needed the visuals to see this shit. Uh, and then, boom, they're in, like, this purple cloud floating in the air. You see Madeline, and then you see a big freaking version of, of Jean, like, just highlighted all blue. And she says, you took my face, my husband, my family, and now my mind. And this is Madeline talking to her and shit. Because she thinks, like, hey, you're fucking the clone. Even though she knows she's the clone now. And then Jean's like, I was the phoenix. And she see her turn into the phoenix. Boom. Um, and then you see Madeline. And then she grabs her like in a ball of fire and holds her. And then it turns into a fucking clock. And then it turns into the spokes on Professor X's wheelchair. And then you see both of them. You see Astral Plane Jean and Madeline in the background. And then you got Professor X rolling up in his wheelchair to Jean Grey's house, talking to her and the parents. You know, this, this, that, and the other. So they then they sneak in the Jean Grey origin story in this show, dude. So we're on the Inferno saga, but now we're teleporting over and just doing a, comic, a bit of the comic run. And we know where they added the backstory to Jean. Um, I don't know if anyone knows it, but... It's when she first unlocks her power and the first gets the Phoenix. This is how the Phoenix like seeks out Jean Grey and shit. And it talks about her friend and it shows her friend fucking playing with her ball that goes into the street, Annie. And then she fucking runs out and then a car fucking hits her. So, and then it doesn't show the car. Like right before the car hits the kid, it flashes to a pane of glass, like glasses that's in front of them and it breaks like because they're in the astral plane, right? So they're seeing it and then boom, she can't go to help Annie like she wanted to. And then she ends up dying. But in the comics, what she does, she tries to go save Annie and like, you know, this, this, and that. And she touches her and tries to revive her. I can't remember if she does or not. It's fucking been ages. Um, but anyways, and then that's when the Phoenix Force notices the, the fucking Omega power of Jean Grey and how that's going to be a being that it, it fucking uses as a host. Um, you know, that's, so that's comic accurate as well, dude. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, so then they're back on the astral plane and then she's like, our best friend died, you know, um, and it awakens our gifts and, you know, this is all pain. We carry all of this together. It's no, and then she goes, no, it's my pain, not yours. And then she's like, let me help you out. So you got light side gene versus dark side gene. And then she goes, can you say which memories of these are yours? And Madeline like fucking floats up. And then you see all these picture frames popping up. It's got them of the whole team, the OG team, the new team, Scott, their wedding. She's like, which ones are your memories and which ones are mine? Because it's like, 
when the fuck did Sinister take you and make me a clone? Like, which and which memories are implanted memories from you and which memories are mine? And then she cracks her through a fucking window pane, floating through the astral plane, and then you see a big version of Jean with her mouth screaming, and they go flying into that. Um, like, she swallows them and shit, and then now they're, like, underwater. And then you see Jean, you see a fucking skylight thing pop open, and then you see a baby and shit. So it's, like, the embryo, it's, like, or the fucking, it's, like, cable and shit, basically, right? So now they're inside the stomach of the fucking astral plane Jean, and it's fucking Madeline. And this is to make, this is Jean's way of, ta- of, you know, talking to Madeline to try to turn her good and shit. Like, oh, look, it's a pure, it's a baby, your fucking baby, da 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 um, and then it like flashes to Jean or straight Madeline <laughs> delivering a uh, cable uh, like in the last episode uh, and Rogue was doing the delivery because she took the doctor's powers to do the, do the delivery for those who didn't see the last episode. Uh, and then they name him and it's Cable or Cable. <laughs> it's Nathan. How could I forget? He's more than a memory. He's a living reminder of the purest love two people can have. So this is Jean talking to Madeline and shit. She starts crying. Da, 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 this is my baby. Da, 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 da. Um, so anyways, and then she says, this is the greatest moment of my life. So regardless of you're a clone or not, okay, and then it shows Madeline. It comes back to her, and then boom, the fucking uh, red crystal on her fucking head breaks and shit. So Sinister's mind control and shit on Madeline's now gone. Um, and then she puts her hand out to Scott and then says, let's go save Nathan and shit. And she fucking grabs his hand, picks him up. Um, so yeah, I mean, that shit's fucking like, yeah, so Jean Grey breaks through, fucking helps her out, um, and then boom. So now we got Madeline Pryor, and then now we got Cable, um, baby Cable in a fucking glass, and the green goo, screaming and crying. Uh, Sinister says, if only Xavier's orphans knew the future we have in store for them. (laughs) Uh, so, and then boom, and then Sinister gets blasted. Uh, and then blasted again by Madeline, um, and then he just heals like he does in the comics and shit, like almost like the T two thousand, right? He gets blasted, and then he just fucking automatically heals and shit. And then he says, "Fools, you have doomed the boy." And then fucking he blasts Madeline, blasts fucking Cyclops, um, and then she says, "Your powers are nothing against mine. It's over, Sinister." Da 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 da. He said, "Oh, is it?" Uh, lady bird, lady bird, fly away home, quote, your house is on fire and your child all gone. I don't know what poem that's referring to or whatever. And then he like disappears into the fucking corner, into the shadows. And then you see his red eyes and all that. And he like disappears. Like they don't know where Sinister went. And then Cable starts breaking out with green fucking patches, metal patches. He's got the techno organic virus, you know? So now he has the techno organic virus just like the comics. Um, yeah, and um, I'm going to take a fucking quick break real quick here. Sorry, not, not too long a break. I gotta, <clears throat> I've got allergy season right now in Texas, so I'm trying to keep my throat clear. So again, we'll be clear. This isn't saving Disney or this, this, that, and the other. But <laughs> if, Marvel, if anything salvageable at Disney, it's the fucking X-Men if they actually do x-men stories and they do chris claremont stories that's why i covered chris chris claremont because he is such a great writer dude he's the longest standing longest ever on a book fucking writer for a comic ever and he'll probably always stay that way i don't see any writer sticking with the same comic for 18 years not this day and age plus this day and age after four or five comics they're rebooting the shit and doing it and starting anew you know so they'll never stick with a plot line and a storyline um, as long as the Claremont era, I mean, cause technically, you know, you got, you know, Len Wein and them starting the giant size X-Men and then, um, and then you get into the Claremont 17 year run. And then after that, you got Lobdell and Nesseza that carry that run again from 92 all the way until 99, 2000 ish. So really you got 17 plus eight, you got 25 years before they then end up re doing a hard reboot on the X-Men, dude. You ain't never going to find that shit happening again, dude. That's just, it's just not happening. Uh, anyways. All right. Let's get back to the review. Let me just check the chat. Okay, cool. Nice. What up? Catch up from the brutal week, but wanted to pop in and bring and say, bring on a great stream. Great thumbnail. Yeah. Thanks dude. Appreciate it. Jesse. Um, all right, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that chat's way behind. So let me refresh this one. I don't know what's going on here with my internet, dude. 
Um, okay, so yeah, so then they, so they've won. Sinister's fucking escaped, and uh, and basically um, they bring Baby Cable back, and you got Beast study him in the lab. Sons and Shadows, what's up, Jeff? What, or Jeff? <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you and Kev are doing good, man. You guys, uh, are you guys? Uh, I know you're on your way. Are you guys monetized yet or not? I know you got the the subs, dude. You guys fucking blew up. Good to see you here, bud. I know you're uh, probably editing right now, so thanks for com- show- showing up and coming by. So, yeah, Beast is telling them that it's a techno-organic virus. Um, you know, and then she's like, there's no time. And then uh, what, Gene, uh, is it Gene or Madeline? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, so what you're saying is not here, not in our time. So this is the idea to, and then she says, uh, but there is a cure in your time, right, Bishop, in your future? And then it says, Beast is nearly fixed. Uh, um bishop's time travel device uh and then said i i do know a guy there smart can build anything he's talking about forge forge in the future right because you know forge and days of future past and all that shit um part of the story love claremont got to meet him a couple times yeah bro hell yeah lots of autographs that's awesome jesse fuck yeah dude Sup guys? Yeah, it's Jeff working on it. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry, bro. I thought when I said Jeff, I said Kev, and I'm like, oh shit, dude. But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, I know a guy there, smart, can build anything. All right, so yeah, Bishop's talking about his future. He puts on his time bracelet. Uh, this band only got enough juice for Nathan and I, meaning we can't go with you. Yeah, so here we go. Bishop about to go home into the future. Bring Cable, the Ascani son, into the future. Uh, and then, so they got like a breathing thing on him. He's like coughing. You got, so the green goo now just looks like a uh, green, like metallical vein, kind of like, uh, Tony Stark in the Iron Man three, right. Or two or three when he's, it's two, right. And he's infected by the sh- shrapnel shit and he gets like the shit on his neck and the, pa- it's like that, but in green basically is how they're showing the techno organic virus. Cause they're making it coincide with sinister, the green mist shit with Madeline anyways. And then Scott's like, I just, I can't fucking do this. He's like, first I got a, first I got a clone wife. Now my fucking kids got a techno organic virus and he just fucking leaves, dude. He's like fucking pissed off. Um, and then Gene is a uh, clone Gene. There'll be days when you're lonely or scared where you ask yourself why we, so she's telepathically, you see her head lighting up, Cable's head lighting up. Uh, but you're my perfect baby. Da-da. So she's basically saying goodbye, fucking you're going to wonder why you're abandoned, this, 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 and that. So I'll interject again. So this is the showrunner interject, um, the showrunner, uh, what, do, what do we call it? Projecting again. But you know what? So, because I remember, because I've been reading all the stuff, and like I said, I, I went into this thing, uh, Guns Blazing. But the showrunner talked about how he's a, you know, he's a gay black man, da, 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 but he said he was adopted, raised by two white parents and an Asian sister in the South. So, you know what this is? Uh, to me, he's, he's bringing up the fact of his parents abandoned him, and he ended up being adopted by somebody else and shit. Um, and I think that's... The, probably part of what's this i mean it's not to say that they didn't do this in cable but they don't i don't think they have in the comics where she's telepathically saying goodbye to him and shit again i haven't read inferno in quite a while that's why i'm gonna be doing it with you fine people uh, but anyways that's a nice interjection where again this guy's interjecting like part of his life and and stuff and i kind of pay an homage to the fact that hey we're giving you up but for adoption and shit. i mean hey I can look at that as a pro-life or as a pro-life message instead of, uh, you know, them terminating the baby or just sending him on his way. They're trying to send him off and to an adoptive family so he can live, right? And that's the whole thing, what they're doing here. So you can almost say that the, you know, the Wokies could get mad at this and say it's too pro-life, especially when um, on that astral plane where they go into the stomach and you see the, the, the fetus that's actually a baby that's alive in the womb. So I could I could look at it that way too if I'm uh, breaking this down analytically, uh, but uh, we owe you nothing less than the best possible future. Yeah. So again, she's just telepathically communicating with Cable. Um, and those who don't know, uh, and that one is without us. So Cable, uh, Bishop opens up a fucking time portal. Madeline walks up with baby Cable, and Bishop takes him off into the future. Nathan's crying, and then boom, and then Madeline starts crying and shit. So I'm gonna pause it again. I think a Bishop doesn't do so in the comics. It ain't Bishop. It's it's um, I'm pretty sure it's the Ascani, right? The um, 
they come from the future. I can't remember if it's through the Shi'ar tech. Man, fuck, it's been... I can't wait to reread this shit. I remember how awesome it is, but I can't remember all the specifics, especially not like the endings and stuff. But um, but yeah, so it, it happens differently. It ain't Bishop and shit. I know that for sure. Because um, Bishop hadn't even been introduced when Inferno came out. Uh, but they, again, they use... It, smartly, they use like Days of Future Past, right? Um, you know, in the Days of Future Past, it's it's Kitty Pride, you know, that goes back and and all that. And then in the movie, it's Kitty Pride that teleports Logan there. Uh, it's not Kitty Pride's conscious. Um, and then in the and then in the cartoon, it's Bishop that comes back from the past to to fucking kill Gambit. Um, anyways, so yeah, so Madeline starts crying. Da 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 da. Portal closes. Uh, and then she's standing out by the lake, by a tree, da 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 And then she walks off. She's got a bag packed, and she's getting ready to leave. And then Jean's like, well, this is your home, too. Like, you don't have to leave, blah, 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 blah. And then she says she remembers almost everything. She's like, so do I. So they basically have shared memories of a life. You know, she's a clone. So, uh, But she says, yeah, uh, when, we don't know when Sin- Sinister switched us. Was I really the Phoenix? Which one of us married Scott? Yada, yada, yada fucking interesting shit dude i mean again i you can nitpick that hey this is an inferno and this isn't the way that it happened in the comics and scott knew who madeline Pryor was but if you're gonna change it they did like interesting stuff in it in it without bastardizing the shit they didn't have like no demons and shit they have demons that look like the demons from inferno they had like so again to me that's a pretty good adaptation again i will complain that this should have been a long, um, you know, six, eight, you know, however many um, uh, episode run, you know, that'd be my biggest complaint, dude, because I think they could have done a lot of this intriguing shit through a long stretch, dude. I think uh, the Inferno saga, just like the Dark Phoenix saga, deserves a freaking long run, you know, like they've done with some of the other ones, so... Anyway, so they're conversing some more. All we have now is the future. Da 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 da. da. Uh, and they're, you know, they're they're just conversing. And basically, she's like, "Well, my next life will be mine. She, you you should know. You have my memories too. You know, I've always wanted to leave the X Men and go do my own thing and shit." And that's when she's like, "Okay, we'll have a good one." Da da da. da. And she says, "Call me Madeline Pryor." So boom, now you got the reference to the Madeline Pryor character. She's no longer clone Jean. <laughs> Uh, and then she's like, all right, well, farewell. She says, farewell, Madeline, farewell, Jean, da 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 And then Scott's in the fucking bedroom. Shit's all torn up and destroyed from the fucking all the demon shit going on. And then him and Jean are just, like, kind of looking at each other. Boom. And now this phase is out to the, te- te- the Tequila Mockingbird Bar. Uh, man on the radio. It's a quote-unquote, oh, it's another hot one, Dallas, with no relief in sight. And we got Storm in a bar, drinking some beer. Stay hydrated. Looks like this year's drought's looking looking sick. Shame about the weather. Dude walks up with a b- dark ponytail. Shame about the su- uh, weather. No summer like a Texas summer. Uh, and then uh, what I wouldn't give if someone could just make it rain. Speak plainly. Who are you? <laughs> Name's Ford Storm, an old friend of Charles Xavier. All right, uh, I'd like to help you get back what you've lost. All right, guys, so Depowered Storm, uh, f- uh, you know, bandwagon fans or whatever. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe Storm lost her powers. <laughs> well, we all knew, like us old school fans, knew Storm lost her powers. She fought Cyclops for lead of the X-Men when she lost her powers in the 80s, and she beat Cyclops, and she got her powers back when she met Forge, and Forge worked on getting her powers back, and then they had a romantic relationship during that time as well. Um, so we're setting that up too, dude. So again, like... You know, you you could say what you want again. I don't know what the fucking guy did. He maybe he's a big piece of shit. Maybe he's not. Maybe he just got outed again because he fucking liked the sword. Maybe they were like, well, we should do this, and uh, we need to make this this, or we need to project that. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. All I know is how fucking ironic, dude, that this guy gets fucking fired. And we actually have a Marvel fucking thing that is adhering to the source material and is actually pretty legit. You know? Fucking what are the odds, dude? Fucking serves them right. Anyways, so yeah, so we got the Inferno saga, you know, 
smash down into one episode. They touch on Jean Grey's backstory and origin. Um, you know, origin of when her mutant latent ability, you know, becomes uh, a mutant power. And then now we have the homage to Storm and Forge, uh, you know, meeting, having a relationship and, and Forge getting Storm her powers back, dude. Like, boom. Cut scene. Cyclops admits concussive energy blast. Jean Grey possesses telekinetic powers. Da 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 da. Boom. They're doing the theme shit. And we're at the end. Six charges explosive kinetic energy. Gambit. Storm. Ability to control the weather. Beast. Superhuman strength and agility. Genius level intellect. Jubilee. Blah, blah, blah. We're at the ending screen, bro. So, I mean, that's it. Fucking. This is Disney Plus and Marvel Studios. They won't ever go that dark as inferno now. no again i'm incubus time lord thanks for being here dude i haven't seen you here man welcome aboard check out some of my other stuff man i, I cover lots of different things but yeah and i don't expect them to go that dark again i've I, um you know a, rewind back 20 30 minutes i've kind of been rambling here and there as i've been going through this shit but like they, I, they did for a cartoon they did some cool trippy horror shit bro I'm, I'm all fucking on board for that dude i have no problem my thing is they could have stretched out they could have made madeline maybe defeat them her go off with sinister you know they could have had the demon you know nistier and sin they could have done some of that they didn't have to whatever i just think they could have probably drawn it out and made it more of an arc you know again i don't expect them to do inferno word for word or any of that but yeah uh, but hey fucking whatever it was good like i said they're paying homage to all i can tell this show was done by a fan uh you know what i'm what i'm supposed to do right now we're supposed to review bad batch <laughs> now i didn't do last week's bad batch um you know because it was it was fucking filler dude i mean there's really nothing to it um again this x-men show from this first episode to this third episode has already covered more ground than the whole entire bad batch series is gonna cover you know bad batch is just like waste of time after waste of time after waste of time uh, you know barely moving the plot forward for something we already all know omega's the key to everything she's got an m count midichlorian don't say the m word you know midichlorian count palpatine cloning snoke blah 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 we already know where all the shit's going dude yet they're just dr slogging through every freaking episode dude it's terrible the writing is fucking terrible um but uh yeah so anyways yeah i mean that was a freaking banger of an episode to me dude i mean again i could there was some subtle stuff with morph again um you know i'm waiting for that deck of cards to fall but i mean first three episodes pretty freaking solid man first one like i said lots of expedition uh, exposition dumps and stuff like that you know i heard a director from hollywood compared the trial of magneto to january well okay i mean anyone can pair i like i said i can compare that Jean gray madeline Pryor fight in the astral plane when she goes into Jean's stomach and sees baby nathan as a not a fetus but a baby in the womb and i could i can call that a pro-life agenda you know <laughs> so whatever uh but anyways yeah so that's that dude i had a i i'm i'm having a blast with the show dude it's it's really feeling like the old school x-men show to me uh why do you need pearl mother than marvel is great i didn't say that it's great blake come on bro I mean, you're taking me out of context, man. You know you know that, dude. Come on. I'm saying the show is written by a fucking fan, dude. This it's and I find it ironic this fucking dude got shit canned. You know, again, I don't know what he did. He, maybe he's a big piece of shit. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't like him. I, I that's I was gonna get into that too when I did the whole thing. I had some articles up. This is the same guy, I guess, that uh, whistle blew the the Witcher. But then I guess he also wrote one of the shitty Witcher episodes that the Witcher fans found not accurate with the books. Da 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 da. Uh, but again, uh, accurate to the source material, I could tell this was written by an X Men fan, not somebody that's like. And then when I read the cells and you know like uh, Jack, what's her name for WandaVision, never even read a, a comic, doesn't know the difference between a comic panel and fucking you know doesn't know anything about comic books in general. I mean, I'd rather take my chances with a fucking fan that actually cares about the shit than somebody that doesn't know anything and just, you know, wants to use the name to push their, you know, political agenda. Uh, and again, I'm just not getting I'm not getting those vibes with this show. Uh, you know, the club scene, whatever, the first episode, whatever. Um, where am I at here? Okay. 
Uh, I ain't gonna get too in depth with the Bad Batch. I don't even know. I got a lot of priorities on a lot of videos I'm making, so I don't even know if I'll make a video out of this one. Like I said, I didn't even cover. I didn't cover five. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong fucking season. I didn't cover five. And this uh, disclosure, not mine. I'm I'm hacking in. I'm sailing the high seas on somebody else. Well, it's technically I'm not sailing the high seas. I'm on somebody else's ship, but I didn't pay for this crap. Um, yeah, I didn't pay. I didn't do. Um, yeah, I didn't do episode five, which was filler. Uh, episode two was definition of filler. Uh, episode five I didn't do. Um, that was basically like Hunter and fucking uh, and Crosshair bitching each other like a married couple. Oh, wait, no. That was last episode. That was episode eight. Sorry. And then I didn't do episode five, which was also filler. Uh, and I probably won't do those episodes. Uh, I may make a prank and just call it filler episode review and just put the word filler across the screen for a minute. Um, okay, the har- okay, the Harbinger. Harbinger. And this features Asajj Ventress and the jangling keys. The X-Men comic book sucks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, do you agree with uh, this guy again? Ghostface, the X-Men comic sucks. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, what's up, Sundowners, bro? Yeah, I was, I was just uh, shouting you out earlier, man. I, gotta, um, I, I just saw the trailers for... Um, fucking uh house of the dragon dude and i was talking about i you know i've only i'm not a you know i've not read all the books and stuff but the one book i did read was fire and blood and that copy you gave me of that illustrated version so i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of binge through that before the season gets going here uh trailers look good man the 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 dragons are looking clean everything looks pretty pretty straight dude so yeah i'm excited for that team black damon damon for the win right <laughs> glad you're here brother um, all right, so I'm gonna fucking take a sip of water here. I'm gonna mute button this time. Like I said, uh, Madeline Pryor in this episode looked like she could have been played by. My name is Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> You might have seen me in anyone but you or Euphoria. You You definitely did not see me in Madam Web. And we definitely didn't see you in Madam Web. All right. So Bad Batch season 3 episode 9. We got Crosshair and Raka. And they're at some freaking um port it's some freaking plant so they had actually wow they got a planet on here that isn't a desert or a, oh it's on an island though again it's either desert or islands that's what disney is into on the star wars locations and then we got hunter we're talking about m counts because the m word we don't want to say midichlorian because m word that dirty george lucas midichlorian word um and then they're talking you know the, the batches they're hanging out and they're uh Walking in this port, it's a, yeah, it's like literally an island, bro. It's like a wannabe Act Two, right? So another reference to uh, the Last Jedi, right? And then you got Batcha, you got Batcha running around catching little alien lizards and fucking Omega running after Batcha, and they're all hanging out. Um, yeah, Sundowners, more of a horror. That's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, obviously they didn't go. It's not rated R horror, but. Yeah, I was I was impressed. I mean, again, my big complaint uh, should have been like a longer arc. They should have made it like four four episodes, six episodes, eight episodes. Fuck, they could have probably done eight if they really wanted to do a good version of Inferno. But again, they did some cool things. They paid homage to a lot of stuff, dude. Got a Jean Jean Grey origin tucked in there, um, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, and then obviously the ending. We got Bishop Forge coming. So yeah, good stuff. Um, okay, back to the Bad Batch. So Omega, walking around a cave, a cave with her little flashlight, finds a ship. And the ship looks kind of familiar. Where did that come from, said Omega. And it's a ship that's got one wing way longer than the other. Kind of reminds me of a certain lightsaber wielder that isn't a Jedi. 
Same one that was rumored to be on the show. Same one that died in Disney canon. Same one that is her death has been retconned by a retcon loney. Same one that's got a blonde SJW haircut. And it is Asajj Ventress. Same one that was jacked from the uh, 2003 Clone Wars and the uh, OG uh, Star Wars Republic comics. Uh, Asajj Ventress. Uh, so the Batches all run up with Batcha, who fucking goes and gets them. And then Asajj Ventress meets up with them. da 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 Fucking, she's like holding Omega by the wrist and all that shit. They're like introducing themselves. Uh, for ro- rogue clones who are trying to lay low, you're failing spectacularly. Um, so, you know, and then Asajj girl bosses a lot in this episode and shit. Um, she's also very desexualized. She has like a plate chest cover um, with her little SJW uh, uh, haircut. And she's been asking questions about M count. That's this M count shit is so annoying, dude. I'm telling you. Um, let's see. How did ha- saw Oh, I don't know. Sundown. They're working on the how did uh, Asaw survive. Uh, I guess when she got fried by the Sith lightning and Quinlan Voss ran up to make sure she was okay. He was too stupid to figure out she was still alive. I, I don't know. Yes, the empowering haircut, Chris. And that's what I noticed on the... Um, the Wokalite trailer, um, they didn't have any empowering haircuts, really, except for the guy that, the uh, non-dramatic, somehow Jedi are dying. <laughs> the Mario Van Peebles fucking Jaws, Hoagie, not Hoagie, what the fuck was the guy's name, dude, in Jaws 4, I gotta go rewatch that now. Hey, yeah, Michael, man, how you doing? We just go out one more time looking at the shark. Right, Mario Van Peebles, Jaws. That's what that one dude looked like in the Acolyte trailer. Anyways, so they're talking, and they're like, did Fennec Shan tell you, and da 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 And then, uh, so basically, yeah, this is uh, payback for the last episode. The last episode, they do this job for Fennec Shan, and she fucking tells them all. And basically, I wish I would have covered the episode, because I could have done uh, the Bad Batch Down Under, you know? And I could have fucked around, because they, they basically had alligator characters in the... Uh, in that episode, I guess I think I, I think they're supposed to be made to look like dinosaurs. They look like fucking crocodiles or alligators to me. Could have called it the Australia arc. Uh, anyways, but uh, yeah, so she comes and she's talking about varying levels of M counts and blah, 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 blah. Everyone has it, but to varying levels. So they're they're moving on this lore with everybody has. Well, I mean, everybody does have midichlorian, so that isn't wrong. Um, only certain are able to yield, yield the force. So again, there, so now we are retconning the retcon of how the force works. <laughs> you can't, cause Filoni can't make his fucking mind up. Cause you know, Sabine and all of them, you can just try real hard. M count. It's something in the blood. Everyone has it, but at varying levels. This is, a, um, Asajj telling them. Those with a high count were believed to be more capable of wielding the force. I guess more capable, right? Let's get real, dude. You have a high metachlorian count. You got the force. If you don't, you don't. None of this try hard bullshit. So they're like retconning their own. Sh- he's retconning his own shit again. After he's retconning her death, he's retconning the way metachlorians work. He's retconning the way whether people can use the force or not. Uh, and then she's talking about being trained. I've never seen a clone to be force sensitive. This would make Omega very special. She didn't say the special part. That's me. Uh, none of you are really normal. You got that right. Da 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 da. I guess. I guess since there's millions of you, so the the uh, the the Kaminoans made millions of you. So that's news to me. Um, I thought at least in the eu there wasn't there like two hundred and fifty thousand clones or some shit like that i don't think um i don't think there was ever millions of fucking clones dude i I could be wrong dude but i'm pretty sure obviously this is disney shit clown wars so Uh, but if you have a high enough m count consider yourself warned because they are looking for people with m counts the empire will hunt you down Here's your intel, and then Asajj goes to leave and shit. And then Omega, you know, she runs up and she can, you know, she tries to convince uh, Asajj to, to test her for midichlorians, um, and all that. She said, "I can't determine your midichlorian levels without testing you." Well, test me then. I can hand. Test me then. I can handle it. 
the truth is rarely comforting. Da 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 da. Nobody's been ever to give me answers. And then, you know, Omega's looking. I got to get a screenshot of that picture. Another depressed Omega look. That'll be good for the thumbnail. Fine. I'll test you. Just remember, you asked for this. Da 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 da. So they're on their fucking little island. She's going to train Omega. Um, sun's about to set. Man, I got to get some fucking water. <clears throat> Throat's drying up here. How the hell did it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you saying empowering haircuts? How she survived, Chris? <laughs> Incubus Time Lord. Ike Perlmutter is a cheapskate. He's greedy. He's a penny pincher. He's stingy. Similar to Scott Buck. However, he was right regarding how unnecessary a lot of the movies the MCAU had made. Yeah, well, I can... I don't know about all that other shit. He's a cheapskate, but hey, whatever, I guess. Perhaps. I don't know the guy personally. I just know his, his history of bailing out Marvel and winning that battle between a couple other uh, corporate big wigs. Uh, and I know after he left and Feige took full control, that's when everything went to shit. That and the fact they got rid of all their creative team that uh, put together the first couple phases of the MCU. Minus the Russos and the Marcus and McFeely writers. Anyways, um, all right. So I got caught up on the Bad Batch, and in nine episodes, what? Is, yeah, so that exactly, Sundown. So that was my point when I was doing my X Men review. I'm like, dude, more shit has happened. Fuck, more shit happened in the first two episodes of the X Men than is gonna happen in fucking all of Bad Batch. I can already call that shit. Um, but yeah, especially in the first three episodes, I mean, there's just no comparison. There's actually shit happening, plot threads. They actually have real cliffhanger endings instead of, oh my God, that's, that's Wolf. Wolf's going to be in the next episode. Like that's the definition of a, a cliffhanger for Disney Wars. Uh, and I mean, you know, it's kind of the same thing with the MCU with their, um, their end credit scenes. Like I haven't seen a good end credit scene since fucking Ragnarok, you know, when Thor ends up on the windshield of the guardians of the galaxy. And then you got fucking, uh, Thanos fucking, um, battleship fucking overhead. Like that's like the last fucking, um, or wait, no, no, no. Thanos battleship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he ends up, so that's the, after the whole shit and he fucks their whole ship up. Anyways, that's the last good one. The ones with Shang Chi and fucking all that bullshit, bunch of fucking garbage, um, end credit scenes, dude. They haven't made a good one in a long time. Uh, but yeah, I mean like for me, the X-Men like, boom, now we know storm and Ford. like they're doing some shit on that. It's a, definitely a lot better writing than any of the Disney plus shows or, you know, on the star Wars or the Marvel side, I would say in my opinion, that is, uh, characters in X-Men show up with a per Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, like, doing things for a reason, you know, stuff's going on, the plot's moving forward, they're building new plot plots through the ending of the other one, covering, they're, you know, covering some character origins, like, they're doing lots of different shit, so, and the comics, they do that, too, they always, they're always flashing back to different scenes of people, you know, in the X-Men from different times and periods in their life. I was just reviewing, what, Excalibur, Volume 3, Number 7, uh, and in that arc, with, they have, like, trolls and different shit going on, but it's Magneto, um, is, like, basically telling some of his backstory to somebody during that, uh, sequence of events in that comic and shit. They do that pretty frequently, dude, in the X-Men books. Anyways, all right, so now they're back to the bad, back to the bad batch here. We're gonna be missing out on a lot of important information. So, I guess <laughs> Asajj Ventress is training her by having her stand there with a fucking apple on her head on one foot on a slippery rock. I guess this is how we test midichlorians now. Um, and then, meanwhile, the Batches, uh, they look up and they find out, I knew it was her. And Ventress hears them, you know, that's Asajj Ventress, da 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 um, and anything. So then Omega falls over again. She's like, pay attention. Don't fucking listen to them. They're distracting you. Da, 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 da. And then Asajj knows they're trying to fuck around. She goes, all right, I'll do it again. And Asajj is like, we're going to move on to the next test. And so she basically tricks Omega, tells her to, there's a tree at the very top of that mountain, blah, 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 blah. Get me these flowers or whatever before the sun sets. And Omega's like, that's too hard. I'm not going to be able to make it there and back before the sun. It's already shining or setting. And she's like, you'll be fine. You can do it. Da, da, da. And then she, or whatever, and she fucking takes off. And then Asajj's like, well, now that she's gone, I'm going to let you guys know. Uh, whatever you plan on doing, don't do it. I'm going to fuck you up, right? 
So, um, yep. So she's standing, turns around, faces the batch. You know, I mean, I don't know what three clones are going to do to a fucking, you know, force user, but hey, we'll find out, right? Um, anyways, so then you flash back, you got freaking Omega running, climbing the mountain, pushing people aside. She's like all into this shit. She's like, I'm going to find out if I'm a Jedi. Uh, and then she finds Batcher and he's like, uh, sitting around digging some shit up, playing, trying to catch some creature. So she's like, get over here, you useless freaking lurka hound, wannabe Vornsker. Whistles over to him. Her, oh, I guess Batcher's a girl. I didn't know that. No, now I'm looking. She's a girl. Uh, so she hops on Batcher. The force is female. Uh, hops on Batcha, and then she rides Batcha. She's uh, very Jedi-like of her, right? Um, and then there, she's like, well, I mean, you guys were dealing with me. Da, 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 da. And they're like, oh, well, now that we know who you are, she goes, well, I guess once I've finished testing Omega's abilities, I'll fucking get out of here and shit. Um, you know, Crosshair don't trust her. Crosshair is the only one with fucking half a brain in this series most of the time. Um, you know, Rekka is telling her to get on her ship and leave before he makes her. So he's an idiot. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So then Ventress, they go to Blaster. She fucking force pulls all their guns away. Says no cheating. Boom. Then they all start running up on her and she's just fucking around, kicking all their asses. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't expect Asajj Ventress to loom, lose to some freaking clones, dude. That'd be pretty freaking othetic, right? So, uh, anyway, so she's fucking them all. They're really into, like, this the Force Kung Fu shit now. I did notice that, too. That's another thing I noticed when watching this. Um, you know, obviously, she's fucking around with them. She's, like, leg sweeping them and doing this and that and the other. But she's doing, like, these different punches and freaking, like, again, Kung Fu style, like kind of like they did with Ezra. Um, and then came up somewhere else too i'm not fucking don't know whatever um but i just noticed that seems to kind of be like a common theme here and then it looks like she almost is ufc arm barring freaking uh uh crosshair on the ground uh rambo hunter tries to throw a freaking night uh vibro, vibro blade at her she fucking catches it force pushes them on their ass and then they're all huffing and puffing she's like um are you tired yet and she's just like sitting around like no no sweat off her brow. Tosses a vibro blade at their feet. Crosshair's ready to blast her ass. Blah 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 blah. <clears throat> um, and then she's like, just stand down like good little clones. You ain't intimidating anyone. Uh, we're not big on following orders, says Hunter. So then it cuts to Omega. And Omega's like climbing the tree. She grabs the, f the special flowers um, and then fucking jumps back on Batcha. Oh, okay. So a bunch of pink flowers are special white ones. So she found the white flower, very supremacist of Disney, um, and she hops on Batcha. And now she's riding down Batcher down the hill. Boom. They all try to blast Assange Ventress. She's jumping, flipping out the way. Boom. Pulls out her piss saber. She's using a yellow lightsaber too now. Everybody didn't know they started that in uh, – Clone Wars Season 6. Um, yeah, when she was a bounty hunter, shit, whatever, she decided to use a piss saber. So that's the thing now. Disney, yellow, everyone's got yellow lightsabers. They're no longer, uh, they're not, no longer rare like they were in the EU. And then Omega runs up, and she's got her uh, piss saber held up to freaking Hunter. He's on the ground, and she's force choking the shit out of Wrecker, Wrecker. And then um, Crosshair's down, knocked out in the corner. So she's already fucked them all up. Um, she's talking about how times aren't the same. Da -da 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 -da, and they're like, we're different than you. And she goes, well, we're all pawns in the same war. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go, Eureka. Um, and then she puts her lightsaber away. She says that Empire is more dangerous than you could possibly fathom. And she says, I'm many things, but I'm not part of the Empire. I'm not your enemy. And she puts her lightsaber away, walks away. Omega goes to comfort them all, and da 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 da. Um, and then um, they're getting ready to fucking take off. And then they um, they're sitting on the ship with Omega. Omega's like telling them, "Fucking, I'm. She needs to complete my training." And da 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 da. Uh, and they're like, "She can't be trusted, you know. She she's done this, this, that, and the other. She's a total piece of shit, you know." Blah 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 blah. And then Omega's like, well, I need to find out. 
nobody else wants to give me any answers. Blah, blah, blah. And she's, you know, whining, saying she wants to finish the training. She wants to find out if she has an end count. And, you know, da, 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 da. We got to move the plot forward eventually for Filoni. And it takes, you know, forever and a day to do that. But you got to move it forward somehow. Um, so she talks to them about this shit. And then, um, and then oh, and she says, uh, oh, I never gave up on you to freaking Crosshair because, you know, he was bad and they all didn't like him. And she gave him a chance and kept trying to talk to him when they were on freaking uh, Mount Tantis and their prison prison state that they were in. And then uh, the next morning comes up and um, she's walking up to Asajj, staying in a dock on this whatever planet, this island, another island in Star Wars. And, uh, yeah, and then she walks up and she goes, oh, I didn't expect it. I don't know, she, I can't remember if she said, I expect to see you back or didn't see you see her, see you here so soon or at all. I can't remember. She goes, well, I've got training to finish and blah, 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 blah. And she goes, oh, and you came alone? And she's like, yes. I, and she goes, I'm surprised they didn't tell you everything about me. She goes, no, they did. No, they did. I'm just very trusting, you know, whatever. Um, you know, so then she says, I'm ready for my next test, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I think she has to, yeah, she's got to leave back. She goes, you failed the first one. She goes, but I passed the second one. That has to mean something. Again, I don't think this idiot realizes the second test wasn't really a test. It was to get her away so she could fucking wreck shop on the Bad Batch. So they hop off on a, on a fucking boat and they're a uh, fucking little, uh, boat with a canopy and they go fly like they're in the bayou again i think they're kind of uh so they're mixing up louisiana and australia now we're doing a continuation of the season uh episode eight um so she's like brings her out to the middle of the ocean whatever and she says uh oh she goes well, what are we doing all the way out here she says oh well force users have an affinity for nature this is a better place for you to concentrate and blah 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 blah, blah. um you know force users connect with the energy and things that uh that are around them so she has this platform thing that like pops up on the side of the fucking boat and yada 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 close your eyes and reach out for what for everything um so yeah so she's training her trying to see if she's uh has any force ability doesn't look like it meanwhile the bad batch they're spying on the fucking uh, shoreline uh, as they're spying Asajj Ventress like looks over to them even though they're like fucking three miles out uh he can see them on fucking binoculars uh she just like looks over and knows that she's being watched and he's like how does she know we're watching she's so amazing uh and then Omega's reaching out and she ain't reaching or feeling anything and then she gets all frustrated and then Asajj makes fun of her for giving up she says this isn't working I'm not feeling anything um, you know, da 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 da. It's a waste of time. You know, they're that. What are they? Uh, Filoni thinks he's doing a callback to Luke, right? Um, she, I blame them for your lack of training and discipline. She goes, I am trained. She's like, yeah, it's different than being a soldier. Even if you have force potential, they can't show you how to tap into it. Only I can. Only through me. <laughs> Um, anyways, and then Omega sits down, all butthurt. Uh, since you can seem content with that, perhaps this is a waste of time. And Omega's, you know, crying in the corner and shit. I bet you don't understand any of this either. Um, so why should I listen to you? So she's like making, oh, she's basically challenging her, right? I didn't even catch that the first time I looked at that. And then Asajj stands up, goes over to the platform, reaches out with a force, and all these uh, Star Wars stingrays, I guess we'll call them, right? All these freaking um, creatures. They're like, Ugh, sorry, it's getting late. Felony likes to make up all these fucking creatures. I don't, I don't know if these are, um, I don't look like any EU creature. Yeah, they, they basically look like glow-in-the-dark fucking uh, manta rays swirling around the boat. And then Asajj accidentally summons a big ass whatever. It's not even, I don't know. Again, I think we are back to another made up creature like the Lurka Hound wannabe Vornsker. Uh, and some of the other made up uh, creatures here. Yeah, so all the stingrays, they go scurrying off. And then she's like, oh shit, where'd they go? 
And then you boom, you have this big fucking kraken like creature that pops up from the water. <sighs> and it's uh like a big like the size of a fucking big ass whale basically. Uh, but it has like tentacle shit too. Um it's not a sarlacc that's not in the desert like in episode two. Um crosshairs scoping them out on the scope. And then, um, yeah, and then fucking this creature pops up. Looks like a fucking turtle with no eyes. Basically, that's what it is. Basically, it's a fucking turtle creature, dude, is what it is. I'm looking, I put closed captions on. See, It's a turtle creature with fucking tentacles, like a kraken, dude. So that's what we're dealing with. Uh, boom, knocks the boat over, they get capsized, the Bad Batch hop into their ship, they're gonna go save the fucking day to rescue them, and, uh, boom, they pop out of the water, uh, it's called a Vraven, a Vraven? Never heard of it, dude. It grabs Omega, freaking, uh, when Asajj swims down to Omega, her hair freaking, like, mohawks out, like she's storm basically, underwater, uh, pulls out her piss saber, ta- Chops off two tentacles of the whatever this creature was called. Um, and then gets Omega to the surface. Oh, it does have eyes. I didn't see the eyes. So it's got some eyes. They're hanging out. It's basically like a big fucking turtle, dude. A turtle with fucking tentacles. Uh, the Bad Batch starts shooting at it and pissing it off. Ventress tells them they're fucking idiots. <laughs> She's like, yeah, uh, don't don't fire at them. You're you're Rooney. I can handle this myself. Yeah, your friends are making it worse. I can do this on my own. Uh, and then Ventress uses the Force, and now she, now, as a Night Sister, even though we're dealing with retconned Disney Night Sisters, uh, Night Sisters in the EU definitely they were known for being like Rancor riders and shit. Like they know how to tame animals and shit. Um, so that they do have that ability. Um, and that is one of the more, again, that's something with the Disney force. They, everyone can use every force ability, which is not the way that it was in the EU. Uh, certain Jedi had certain force abilities, certain Jedi didn't just like certain Jedi or Sith use certain, uh, fighting, uh, techniques and lightsaber forms and others didn't, you know, based on uh, who they were. Uh, anyway, oh, holy shit. Sorry. Should have used that mute button. I gotta get used to using that mute button with this mic. Picks up everything. Uh, so she, uh, the Vraven. I'm gonna look this up, dude. I've never heard of a Vraven in the EU. Um, anyway, so she tames it. It puts her down, and then it swims off. And then the Bad Batch come up, and then Crosshair puts his hand out. Now he's accepting adventures, right? Puts his hand out. Boom. She jumps on the fucking ship. Boom. Now they fly back onto the island. So. What have we learned? Uh, we learned that Omega... There's like one other segment. I'm just saying we're going to summarize now. So we learned Omega doesn't seem to have any force ability. We learned that... Uh, Asajj Ventress... Is doing this good arc. Man, I wouldn't be surprised. She's got a yellow lightsaber. Now, obviously this is the beginning of the rise of the Empire... I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we've already retconned her death. Let's just retcon, um, you know, the life expectancy of... Um, um, she's considered Dathomir. She's not ratatacky like she should be, but we'll call her a Dathomir. Uh, Dathomiri, um, we'll just say they can live, like, to be 300 years old, right? And we'll just retcon that, too. And why don't we just have Asajj be, like, one of Ray's first students or something, right? And then Ray can teach Asajj how to be even more awesome now that she's alive in Disney lore. You know, and while she's at it, she could bring like an extra yellow lightsaber or two and give those to Ahsoka, and then they can all have yellow lightsabers. That'd be pretty cool, right? If I'm a Disney writer, if I'm a baloney, that'd be so cool, man. And then it'll be like the new Jedi Order, and they all have yellow lightsaber, the new yellow saber order. It's our own version, and then we'll use the Grisk, the Grisk, right? Instead of the Yuzhong Vong. And then that'll be real cool, right? Because the Grishk are, are like Yuzhong Vong, even though they're not. Anyways, um, all right, let's get back to the review here. Let me uh, finish this beer real quick. I did think about that. I, those are the biggest things of this episode I noticed. Inconsistencies on the lore. Again, Dave Filoni. 
Um, but yeah, like, so now it does matter if you're trained and how you use the force and all that. And it matters about your M count levels. Uh, but then if you're Sabine, it doesn't just try really hard, you know? Uh, anyway, so they pack up. Asajj is like walking back from her ship. They're all, the Batchers are all hiding out in this cave where she got her ship parked. The fucking Batcha. And then, uh, they ask her. Did you figure it out? Do I have an I, a high M count? I can't do an Omega voice, dude. Um, she's such an annoying actress, dude. I could never stand her anyways. And she said, no. Then why is the Empire after me? Believe it or not, I don't know everything. That's surprising. You're a female in Disney Star Wars. But seeing as a high M count would make you uh, a target, consider yourself lucky. And then Omega's like, but I'm already a target. <laughs> And then Rekka's like, we'll figure it out. Let's go. Let's get some chow. And then Rekka walks off with fucking Omega. And then after this, Ventress talks with fucking uh, Hunter and Crosshair. And they're like, we know you're fucking lying. <laughs> Crosshair says, it, you're lying. She said, about which part? She, and then Hunter's like, you tell us which part. She's like, well, if Omega had potential, she'd have to be trained. And, you know, then she, which means she'd have to leave you guys behind. And then they're like, that's not happening. She's like, well, what you want is irrelevant. The fact is, the Empire is after her, and they won't stop. So she's woman splaining. Uh, if I were you, I'd leave this place. You're not as safe as you think you are from the Empire. And then Asajj walks away. Tells him, our business here is done. <laughs> and then uh, Crosshair said, I can't figure out what side you're on. And as he's saying that, I already knew her answer because it's this uh, grade it triple A writing. She said, my own. <laughs> Anyways, and then they said, well, what if the Empire comes after you? And she says, they can try. I still got a few lives left. Uh, and that's it. And then fucking Hunter goes walking off. Crosshair goes walking off. Omega's playing with Batcha. And then fucking she sees Asajj's ship power up and fly off. And there's our G, our uh, key jangle. There's our, oh my god, Asajj Ventress. Even though it, re what's the one video Grizzy was watching today? Fucking the, it retcons canon. Who cares? Quote unquote, who cares? It's just fucking canon lore. It's just the rules of the fucking universe we're in. It's not that big of a deal, right? Oh, my God. Othetic. Anyways, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, a slog. It's like she did all this stuff, but she didn't really confirm. She can't really confirm her midichlorian count, dude. Now, if Darth Plagueis was around, he'd be able to because Darth Plagueis actually honed in the skill, which was passed off at the latter parts of the Rule of Two Sith on how to um, track... Um, Force beings with with uh, with with force ability and midichlorian count, um, and then Plagueis like perfected that shit. So uh, that would be a whole different scenario, but that's obviously not what happened here. Um, you know, just some of this uh, this mind uh, mind bending felony writing, dude. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, and then um, okay, yep. Yeah, so it's uh, two fifteen, and I am going to you guys that are still here or lurking. I can only do one, so you want me to do first issue of Inferno uh, or Dark Force Rising, man. I already I already put Dark Force Rising on the back burner last week, um, but it's up to you guys, dude. You guys are here, so you guys are controlling what's going on. So let me know what you want. I can I can I try to squeeze both in, dude, but I, I can't, dude. It's two in the freaking morning, dude. That that stupid internet in, internet interruption really fucked things up, so. Let me know real quick. My lurkers, somebody tell me something here. I got sundowners, last one in the comments section. You guys all fell asleep listening to me. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, I guess first one to say chime in. You're calling it, whoever it is. Inferno or Dark Force Rising. Your call. I know it's late as fuck. I gotta do one of these though, dude. They can't keep putting shit on thumbnails and not covering it all. Uh, X-Men character show up at the purpose. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to just make it an executive decision then. Let's see. 
Let me get my shared screen up here. Do, 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 do. Well, I got it on Inferno, dude. So I guess we'll just go with Inferno. Sorry, Dark Force Rising. All right, let me make sure. Boom. All right, let me make sure that's popping up on the shared screen. Yes, it is. All right, cool. Here we go. Enter Inferno. The Inferno is here. Strike the match, fan the flames, and light the Inferno. Limbo's demon lords, Sim and Nasir, corrupt two of the X-Men's nearest and dearest, Colossus's sister, Ileana Rasputin, and Cyclops' wife, Madeline Pryor, and use them to bring a horde of demons raining down on New York City, transforming the city into a living nightmare. But as Ileana battles to win her soul back, Madeline lets her slip threatening to cast a spell that will emerge earth and Lim- that will merge earth and limbo permanently with the sacrifice being her own innocent child Nathan Christopher Summers and when Mr. Sinister brings his own agenda into the mix secrets are revealed that rock cyclops' life to the core the X-Men X-Factor and New Mutants and all new exterminators face one of their most harrowing ordeals ever with the fate of the entire dimensions hanging in the balance and the price for victory perhaps higher than any of them can bear um yeah so this is a 20 issue run x factor 33 to 40 x factor annual number four x terminator one through four uncanny x-men 239 to 243 and then new mutants 71 72 and 73 uh, and then there's here okay so here we go um this one is nasir i believe or uh yeah i'm pretty sure is the green one and then sims the purple looking demon sinister madeline and then we got the marauders right here which they'll uh, pop up later and then we got storm havoc wolverine angel i think he's death currently at this time uh and then we got b cyclops jean gray marvel and her marvel girl get up and Iceman. So, X Factor number 33, Ignite Inferno. For all the world to see. Uh, and then, so, there are, like, uh, comics that lead up to Inferno. And it shows, like, the um, the demons and then some of the other, um, what is it, Spider or something like that. They, he, like, catches these other people and they're trying to do, like, um, people that can do teleportation powers and shit like that, because that's their whole thing. Uh, and then Ileana is kind of the key because they use her, and then I believe it's um, spoiler alert. I mean, a little bit of a plot synopsis here. They use her, and then I think one of the ones from Power Pack or the Exterminators, uh, they use like tech to le- to leave the gate of limbo open and shit, and that's what they're trying to do so they can all inhabit the earth. Uh, muggings, riots, accidents, and bizarre, apparently heat-induced heat hallucinations are being reported as the record-breaking heat wave continues for the second straight week with no end in sight. That's a reporter. Uh, tower ain't no hallucinations, sister. And then, boom, we're the alliance of evil, and we're a riot all by ourselves. Bam. Uh, Louise Simonson wrote this one. Um, yeah, so Louise obviously is Claremont's editor at the time, so you know they're working on the story together. Uh, keep going, Trish. I'll patch through to the direct network. In this heat, violence grows from nothing, a chance, a remark, an imagined slight. Nothing you call and pass in a Mutant Registration Act. Nothing. Yeah, so they did the Mutant Registration Act, kind of like they do like the Sokovian Accords in the MCU. Um, that was prominent at this time. Um, anyways, Uncle Sam threw us in jail. Well, about an hour ago, the jail let us out. And he's like, fucking shit up. Uh, This report of inanimate objects acting on their own violation of uh, typical those we have received by the score. Oh, and their own volition is typical of those we've seen on our own score. Tales of manhole covers and fire hydrants that attack passersby. Unobstructable drains that nonetheless back up telephone lines filled with ghastly, ghostly laughter. As the deadline for mutant registration nears, it is just one of many problems facing the city, besieged by heat. This is Trish Tilby live with... <laughs> Freaking dude comes up behind her. Excellent work, Time Shadow. 
Mutant registration may be one of small problem, babes. But we are the ultimate of the alliance of evil, intended to show the world that their jails can't hold us mutants. They surely can't make us register. So they're taking the camera shit over. Like Frenzy said, we're going to teach the city that mutants can do, especially Mondo Mad Mutants. Boom, and we've got a uh, freaking manhole cover blasting off. We challenge the X-Factor to try to stop us. You notice, Frenzy, the city getting weird. Uh, and then now we're in Upper West Side of Manhattan. Uh, we don't want school clothes, Iceman. Or to be sent away to school, especially since it means summer school. And then he's talking about you kids need to catch up. Years of missed lessons. Okay, so these are the uh, exterminators, right? And this includes um, Rusty and Skids, uh, Boom Boom, there's Leech, and then Ar Artie Maddox, I think it is. That's like an alien looking dude right there. Uh, and they're like the, they're called the exterminators. So they're a team and they're like little kids that basically the X-Men are training, dude. Uh, and then we got Iceman and Jean Grey there. Uh, this st stupid, uh, uh, this is stupid. The clothes keep tangling themselves up. And no matter what size we try on, nothing fits. This is supposed to be small, and the large was too tight. That's impossible. You kids aren't reading the labels. Uh, we'll carry out, <laughs> we'll carry out the rejects. Try on the new ones, guys, and quit whining. So they're dealing with little kids. <laughs> Bobby sure has gotten mature all of a sudden. <laughs> I guess he got some sense kicked into him when the beast saved him from infectious kiss. Uh, I think maybe he's scared the beast will die. Whatever he thinks, whatever he thinks, he's making me crazy. Uh, oh, and then they reference so that reference points a uh, beast getting or uh, oh no, sorry, infectious. Uh, I wonder what Bobby and Gene and Scott will do. Oh my God, you know what I just noticed? Okay, yeah, I got my share screen on. Whew, okay. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there. Uh, I wonder what Bob, Bobby and Scott and Gene will do about mutant registration. Will they sign up or not? It stinks making people register because they're born with powers like they were dangerous weapons or something. Hey, Rusty, you're the only one of us kids who's old enough for compulsory registration. Us minors are supposed to register voluntarily, but Gene says we shouldn't bother. I think she's afraid the government wants to use us. But you can't register, can you, Rusty? You're on the... L.A.M. from the Navy. Okay. Uh, I bet X Factor had to give you false IDs just to keep you in school. Yeep. What is it with the sweater anyways? Help. Boom. Okay. So, it attacked me, Rusty, I swear. It tried to strangle me. Right. I bet the government can't wait to get their paws on you. <laughs> Yeah, because you basically can't control her powers. I can see the headlines now. Mutant born with power to make energy pellets defeats sweater. You know what, Scary Rusty? I think maybe you're right. Uh, okay, yeah. Now see what you've done. So you got the sh you got them fucking talking shit. Uh, don't sweat it, Ice Man. Boom Boom just had a little accident. An accident. Ever since X, Fa X Factor rescued you, Boom Boom. We've made every effort to impress you upon, uh, impress upon you our, the importance of restraint in the use of your power. And now, hey, X-Factor. Boom, he fucking throws a car through the window. Somebody said you were here. Bobby freezes it. Meanwhile, X-Factor's sentient ship hovers over the North Atlantic where Cyclops, the team's leader, watches as the beast drifts between between life and death all right so the sentient ship here this is actually apocalypse's ship and they get it they think that they've gotten it after defeating him and all that but he actually sets the ship up because he wants to use it at a later time it's basically gathering intel on them from what i understand what i remember uh, i couldn't pursue him very far at any rate uh, Freedom Force didn't know where he was. Another thing, so Freedom Force is basically the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants turned government registration. So now they're all about helping the government get mutants to register. Um, Freedom Force didn't know where he was. My only clue was Destiny's oracle, uh, auricular statement that my son was surrounded by cold mists and iron bars. Uh, it's sad, Cyclops, that Beast's illness delays your pursuit of your missing son. Okay, yeah, so that, in that text, that's the computer talking. 
um, or the life force of the ship, the sentient ship. Um, and then he's saying, yeah, Destiny gave him a vision. His son's uh, surrounded by cold mist and iron bars. So he's thinking um, Cable may be alive. Um, and that his present is tied to my past. It was also it was also nebulous. Although iron bars almost have meaning, if only I could think. Perhaps if I were to induce a trance state where you could recall the inc incidents of boss in your life, uh, bars in your life, duh. Uh, maybe Hank keep doing that switching to blue and furry back and back again thing. Ship, there is some indicate the ship. There is some indication that he is dying and yet appears to be stronger than ever. I must again increase the force of the restraints. Perhaps if I re-examine him... This flux in his physical state is caused by infectious attempt to manipulate the molecular structure of his body. And even before the unfortunate event, he has been physically assaulted again and again by chemicals and by the villainous pestilence's touch. He had that combination to thank for his body increased strength. Now using that strength, he is fighting off infectious change. I fear that he may win the fight, and that with the victory may kill him. Cyclops, I hate to interrupt your vigil, but there is a problem in New York you should be aware of. <laughs> uh, New York, that's where Gene and Bobby took the kids. Alright. We're going to teach the city what mutants can do, especially Mondo Mad mutants. Hi, Mom. <laughs> We challenged X-Factor to try to stop us. Unfortunately, it seems that they are out. Uh, the Alliance of Evil, we fought them last in California, X-Factor number six. They were extradited to New York. They have been in jail for 20 years minimum. Oh, they should have been in jail for 20 years minimum. Unfortunately, it seems that they are out. <laughs> uh, and out for X-Factor's blood. Make us register, will you? It lists us, recruits us, and forces us into Uncle Sam's mutant army. Well, we're the Alliance of Evil. We work for ourselves. They're demonstrating against the Mutant Registration Act. If we try to stop them, does that make us for it? You kids aren't going to try and stop anything. Stay there. Marvel Girl and I will handle this. And then Iceman and Jean Grey run up. Foom. There go more of those manhole covers, like in the news. It seems like the city's fighting on the bad guy's side. Gene, Bobby could handle those losers alone, but with this stu weird stuff going on. Besides, it's uh, four against two. We better help. Look, there's Stinger behind Iceman. Hang back, Rusty. You use your powers out in the open today, especially when the government's mind is on mutants. They might recognize you come and come after you. So that's Richter right there, right? Boom, shaking up the ground. Shaka. Besides, my vibro power will shake her up plenty. You won't get away that easy. She breaks Bobby's ice bridge. Crash. Hey, Frenzy, hands off. Ah, but it's hands-on sort of fight. Boom, he grabs Gene in a freaking headlock. Thought bubble. Hiding back here, shirking combat, letting other people fight my battle for me. That's sure not the way I planned it. Last year when I signed on with the Navy. Hey, Towers, got Iceman. Let him go or else. Three, two, one. <laughs> Yee. <laughs> Not bad for a child. Now try those little power pellets on me. While in a Kansas suburb, there, 27 Johnstown Drive, Tammy and Sheila Blake, ages 7 and 8. Father, a nuclear engineer. How interesting. Both children appear physically normal, but genetic mutagen scan registered, registered positive. Powers have not yet emerged. That will make it easier. Wake up. Wake up, my darling boy. You have a play date with some little friends. They'll be scoffed at like before. They won't be the same. But in your hands are clouds of glory. Use them. But they will be safe now. Don't forget your gun. Tammy, what is it? 
It's a transformer, I think. <laughs> Joss said they're just toys, but I knew they were real. It's funny, too. Like, uh, a lot of Marvel back then, they, uh, especially Claremont, referenced, like, Star Wars, Transformers, all different kinds of pop culture shit. I don't know. Oh, don't be a jerk, Sheila. Look, it's friendly. It's one of those good Transformers. Come on. What's all this noise? What's going on here? Is there any... What is it? It's horrible. Tammy, Sheila, fun. What's wrong with them? Why won't they move? Why won't they answer me? Karen, gotta get back. It's got a gun. Blam, blam. And here they are, new teammates for us, darling boy. The world seeks their destruction, but they are safe with us. And there are more. The list of mutant children grows like Jack's beanstalk. And those who would destroy them grow bolder each day. We'll fly off. Tomorrow we will rescue the others as Nanny rescued you. But tonight, Nanny's darling must go back to sleep. That's right. Close your eyes. You're, you've are you earned your rest. You're the best little orphan maker in the world. So Nanny and Orphan Maker. So they, when Gambit first appears, uh, they're the ones that have, because basically um, Orphan Maker um, turns can turn people, like de-age them and shit. So that's when Storm's de-aged and then um, Gambit meets her stealing shit. And then he helps her out. And then he figures out how to get her un, un aged And that's when she brings Gambit to the X-Mansion. And that's when he joins the team. So, um, And in New York, look, the lady wrestler has one of the girls. And here I hide. Daddy was a sailor, died in the war. Mom's dying. Wish I'd grow up like my dad. What I did was grow up like Uncle Ted, working in his hardware store, hating every minute of it. Made a mutant out of me instead. The Alliance jerks came after me once Once the kids need me out of their fight. Oh, wait. Once the kids need me out there fighting with them. Mask will disguise my identity good enough, I hope. Let her go. Give me one reason I should. Leave her time shadow. Make me. Womp. He. <laughs> uh, that mask hides your face, Rusty Collins, but it can't disguise your power. The little sailor boy who burst into flames and burned a woman. It was an accident. I didn't know. A scared little boy who freaked and ran away. Sure, I was scared, and then the Navy came after me with everything that I had. It had. I stood and fought. My daddy would have been proud. Nonetheless, it should have taught you not to set fires. Instead, you hid, quivering in X-Factor's shadow. X-Factor saved me, Frenzy. If it wasn't for them, I'd still be running or probably dead. And they taught me how to control. I knew um, Time Shadow could move out of time and would... Oh, uh, and that he would if he had to, so I made him do it. You've grown up, I see. I tried to recruit you once before. I'll give you a chance, then. Join us. Rusty, no. Ship, I should have been there. But Hank, mm, then I will send you. No. Ship, restrain him. He has grown too strong. I do not know if I can. Psych, don't worry, I'm okay. What? I saw, heard Jean and Bobby and the kids all in trouble with the Alliance. I wanted to break loose. Help. Only I couldn't hold the thought. Then they asked Rusty to join the team, and I knew I had to stop them. I struggled harder than before, and I awoke from a, that nightmare. You see me? I should uh, do the Intelligent Beast accent, huh? Blue again and covered with fur, a monster to some, but humanity is measured in mind and soul, not in number of hair follicles, and I, I can, and I can reason again. Oh, the joy of language and of 
ecstasy of ideas. But I shall reverse fit, or <laughs> but I shall reserve fitness for those who require it. Brute strength should suffice against the alliance, and strength I have in abundance. And now ship. A, uh, a teleportation beam, if you please. Me, join the Alliance of Evil. Don't pretend to be offended, pretty boy. Enough gabbing. Uh, I say we take him now. You're like already on the run from the Navy? Bram. What was that? I did it with my little fists. Now let's run a little physics experiment, shall we, students? And determine together what will happen when these fists impact with your faces. Hank, is that you? Uh, you were well back. Wait. You're well? You're back. You're smart. Shit. I lost my place. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, well, well. Hank McCoy, a.k.a. Beast. Yes, Artie. Beast change. You used to be an Avenger, didn't you? Oh, gross. Fur and fangs. He reverted. Um, he reverted. He was like this before we knew him. So, like, what are you doing slumming with these losers, Beastie Boy? What are we standing around gawking for? We still outnumber them. Au contraire, we have you surrounded. Bam. Cyclops blast him with the optic beam. Have you really? Wham. Gonna clear the decks for action. Gonna take out the garbage. Boom. Yee! <laughs> Crump. Move, skids. I can rattle her butt good. Is that before or after she electrocutes you, Richter? Keep behind me and you too, Leech. Only don't go... Oh, sorry. Only don't get too close, okay? We don't want your power shutting down my defense system. Oops. Don't sweat it, guys. You'll... A telekinetic containment bubble works wonders, doesn't it? The only thing Stinger can shock now is herself. Stand still, you reject Avenger. Neither strategically wise. Smash. Nor necessary. Fight seems to be going against us, and since I'm better at discre discretion than valor... I wish you all a fond farewell. I'm still here, but why? No powers. Leech's job. All right, remember we were doing that uh, episode two review on X-Men 97. That was one of my nit nitpicks too. Leech's mutant power. Um, you know, he was in Vicinia Magneto when he fucked up all the freedoms of uh, humanity, guys. Um, and he was too close to Leech, in my opinion, for him to abuse his power, so... Um, I don't get with you. Oh, wait. I don't get you, Collins. Shit. I don't get you, Collins, fighting with the good guys. Do heroes have their mugs on wanted posters? You act all pure and good, punk. But you're really one of the you, uh, one of us already. <laughs> no, he's not. Tell him, Rusty. That poster doesn't mean anything. You're one of us. You're one of the good guys. Tell him. Bum, bum. his like Richter basically like earthquake vibration shit I was an Avenger once Frenzy but I've been with X Factor for a while now and there have been some wham hey Avenger uh, hey Avenger I've read your specs you're not so tough dramatic improvements Hank Hank that you Trish, I... Helicopter flying in. Cease your vigilante activities immediately. X-Factor, surround your prisoners or face criminal charges. What? Freedom Force? 
of the United States uh, government. If you official if you official types feel so strongly about vigilantes, maybe you should have stopped uh, stepped a little sooner, like before we finish the fight. <laughs> These scum aren't worth dirtying Freedom Force's hands, says Mystique. They call themselves the Alliance of Evil. Too close to our old name. But, wait, okay. Too close to our old name, but we reformed them. We don't like that, and Uncle Sam's going to make them real sorry. And speaking of government, there's the matter of Mutant Registration Act. That was my blob impression before that, by the way. Uh, so they got some of them knocked out fuckers. Uh, you're at the post office, I assume. You've come here to register like good mutant citizens. Here are the forms. Sign them. We'd hate to have to arrest you. That shows some judgment as an, uh, yeah, as an attempt would provide extremely unprofitable and embarrassing to Freedom Force. We of X Factor serve the people of this country unofficially. Unlike Freedom Force, we are not <clears throat> employees of government paid to serve, subject to the whims of various administrations. Nonetheless, my identity is well documented. I have served my country as an avenger in times past. And though I consider this document somewhat burdensome, onerous in fact, I have signed it, as an example of my willingness to serve in future should the need arise. Did he make a paper airplane? <laughs> paper airplane and threw it at him. <laughs> the rest of us will sign these documents acknowledging our public identities and our public activities as mutant citizens, but only with the names we have chosen to represent these activities. We will continue to protect our private identifications and private lives. And if a government has, <clears throat> and if government has a problem with that, let Freedom Force try to beat them out of us. What about you, Rusty Collins? Freedom Force has suspected your association with the X Factor for some time. Now you have provided proof. You too must sign. No, I won't. I won't run again. Either or, take the cowards away. X-Factor's activities are well documented. They're the good guys, no matter what some people try to say. I am too, but I'm also a private citizen. <clears throat> With all the rights, privileges, and obligations associated with citizenship in this great country. Wow, they're actually talking about citizenship and what people do as citizens? That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> a different time. Uh, but human beings with special gifts and the same human rights as everyone else, tomorrow I will voluntarily turn myself in at Portsmouth Naval Prison where I will answer this poster's allegations. See, Exterminator 1 is now on sale. Why, miles from New York in the main headquarters of the secret organization known as The Right, when last I faced these mutant obscenities, I was hurled into the sea in New Mutant 60. Death loomed, then passing fishermen pulled... <clears throat> oh, sorry. Death loomed, then passing fishermen pulled me from the water. Reborn in hatred and rededicated to our glorious purpose, that mutant must be expunged from the face of the earth. Again, death threatened. So this is uh, Cameron Hodge, right? Getting this armor on, and then he knows. <clears throat> What's up? Commander, he has arrived. Excellent. Deploy the troops. This time, however, I have seen death coming and i am prepared to meet him in a headlong battle yeah so he has this uh, armor on so he can fight angel cameron hodge uh all allies are poised against him and i am ready battle you've been waiting for death versus commander hodge the only way is death 
And then we'll get into the exterminators next week. This is number one. Now begins Inferno. And there is uh, Nasir. And see, yeah, I think that's um, dude from Power Pack, right? In the wheelchair. And then we have the exterminators, all the youngsters. But yeah, so they'll get into that. Invasion of the Baby Snatchers. <clears throat> Yeah, see, they're pretty fucking sick, dude. So you'll see, like, um, in that episode, man, there was definitely some callbacks to this shit. And then this is Sim. So they have two different um, goals here, right? Sim wants to limbo, like, to freaking pour over onto the earth. And then Nasir wants to... Um, she's, like, the main one trying to control Madeline Pryor, if I remember correctly. Anyways, it's kind of an interesting dynamic, dude. Because later on, you get into... All the other different um, <clears throat> sub battles going on in this arc, dude. So it's pretty fucking cool shit, dude. Anyways, all right. So there we go with that. Late as hell, dude. 70 is still watching, man. I appreciate it, guys. Apologize for the internet takedown. Appreciate you all jumping back in here to, to get it. I mean, man, I think that was like an hour. I think we got another like three, three and a half hour stream. So I'm making uh, <laughs> I'm making these a regular thing. Um, all right, so that is going to wrap up tonight. I appreciate all of you being here. I apologize I didn't get to Dark Force Rising. I think so kind of like I did with X-Men, like that kind of got put towards the back last stream. I will do my best to try to throw Dark Force Rising into the more of the front of the stream. Like probably won't be the first thing I cover, but yeah. Um, and then I'm working on some other stuff, dude. I've already mentioned stuff that I've been working on, but yeah, I got to... I got to cut a lot of this stuff into videos, man. I got some vids that I got to get out there. But, um, yeah, so I'll be doing part two of the um, – I'm probably going to do my Wokalite trailer review tomorrow. I already got the thumbnail for that. I just got to edit some of the stuff. Remember, I had the sound issues last week, so I got to try to figure out how to make that somewhat of a fluid video. Um, and then I'm going to do my Clone Wars uh, – 03 Clone Wars better than uh, TCW part two. Um, it's funny because some – things people brought up in my comment section of part one i'm like oh stay tuned we got part two i covered that shit <laughs> anyways uh but yeah we'll definitely get into the exterminators one hopefully i can get like two infernos two dark force risings i really try to cut and not really do too much of the news but it is what it is i'll make a video out of that clone wars multimedia project again i kind of just did that as like an entry point or just like a reference point for people that way you know, people that are into O3 Clone Wars that maybe don't know about the Clone Wars Multimedia Project, they can get into that too and shit. So, anyways, I appreciate all of you being here. I moved all my stuff out, so my um, my ending should be a little more flawless now. So, once I'm done with the stream, um, I can easily just uh, say um, thanks again for watching. And remember... Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. <laughs>